Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique and today is Fabric Friday. Today I'm really excited to share with you this new jacket that I constructed for the first time using our heavy 8.6 ounce batik canvas. And I'm super thrilled with how it turned out. I've made a couple of bags and accessories and things with the canvas itself using whether it be soft and stable or like the uh, backpacks up there, there was a little bit of fusible interfacing and uh, fusible fleece in it but I've never constructed a garment garment. And this was really a fun experience. And I'm gonna share all of my tips and techniques and what I went through to make this particular jacket. The pattern that I used is 9239. And I've shared a little bit about this uh, garment on past Fabric Fridays. So I'm not gonna go into all the details, but I just wanna do some surface reintroduction the pattern itself is a one size. So we have an extra, extra small through an extra, extra large all in one pattern. And the bust size for the extra, extra small starts at 29 and a half to a 48 for the extra, extra large. The ease on this jacket, because it's a jacket, I'm assuming they have incorporated a lot of ease. So it's between eight to 10 inches of ease. And when I'm working with a jacket, I really consider two points that I, I really wanna make sure fit me properly. My shoulders, which really I incorporate into the bust measurement and my hip area. I always wanna make sure that there's enough room around the hip area and I don't really worry so much about the middle for myself, but definitely take your body measurements, feel comfortable with where you're starting based off your body measurements, and then how much ease is anticipated based off the finished garment measurements themselves. I made a medium and I did grade just slightly at the hip because I just wanted to make sure I had a, you know enough fluid fabric around um, that hip area in case I'm wearing a heavy sweater I just didn't want it to be too snug there and have everything be disproportional. So that's what I did, I, a medium. And just so you know, I'm 5'7", a little bit 5'7 and a half-ish. And so I am wearing view B, which should finish to 24 and a half inches. And I, it's a little bit longer than 24 and a half because I didn't sew a deep hem. The hem is supposed to be about an inch and a half. I only sewed a hem of about five eighths of an inch because I just wanted it to be slightly longer as long as I could really make it, okay? Let's talk a little bit about the different views of this pattern. And I'm gonna start with what I made. I made view B, which is the shorter jacket. The sleeve is a big difference between view A and B which is a much larger sleeve with a larger opening. And then the only other difference are the uh, pocket variations. So this has two pockets here and side pockets. The pockets on the side are your typical teardrop pocket, which I sometimes think I'm gonna, I, you know, on the next jacket that I make, I'm, I am going to adjust the inside pocket. I just feel like I can barely put anything in them. Sometimes they're just so small. And so I might make that a little bit larger or a different shape to fit a cell phone. Since I don't have pockets on the front, lower portion of, of the jacket, I really would like to have those be a little bit bigger. Now, back to the variations of the pattern, because there are a lot of options in this particular pattern and we can use it for more than one garment. View A, is a longer jacket so it's 27 and a half inches so we're going to get a little bit longer for those of you who do like a longer jacket and the sleeve is a streamlined sleeve a more traditional sleeve again though with a cuff so we have each one of the views have a cuff with a button it's just the shape of the sleeve that's slightly different view b and c 
are the same sleeve and the only variation with B and C, view B is supposed to have a patch, a really creative patch on the elbow area. I decided not to do that. I just really wanted to make this first without any accents. I think it would be fun on the next jacket I make to find a coordinating fabric for the patch or the collar or the facing inside, something to give it a little bit more character than just one single fabric. So I think that's where we all can let our creativity kind of kind of fly, is adding a little bit more of the detail and mixing some fabrics together. View C, again, is just slightly different. It, view C does not have a patch on the sleeve. It's the same length as View B, but it has front pockets. So for those of you who love a front pocket, that's your choice. So cut out those pieces and make sure that you've incorporated that into your jacket. But otherwise, B and C are the same. Okay, now the tools that I used or the notions that we used for this particular jacket, it does call for interfacing, about a yard and a half of interfacing, fusible interfacing. I didn't use any interfacing. So this jacket is simply fabric, a pattern, and all the other little things that you need, such as thread and your buttons. That's it. This calls for seven buttons for view B. The button size is seven and a half inches. So it is a bigger button, but it's nice because the jacket, you wanna kind of have a, a sturdy button. And view A, because it's slightly longer, there's one more button. So it's eight buttons. Now, the canvas. Working with the canvas as a garment and wearing the canvas now, I wouldn't probably be wearing this inside the office like I am today because it can feel a little bit heavy. It is a heavy, it's funny because our 8.6 ounce canvas isn't only kind of that, you know, hopefully I can do a close up of this, but this is the remaining fabric that I had from cutting out the pattern pieces, but you can hear it. Hopefully I can capture that on this video so that you can kind of, you can hear the fabric. It is a stiffer, canvas and that's one of the reasons why I didn't use interfacing at all is because there really is no need. You don't need to add any more stiffness to a heavy, heavy canvas like that. Had I needed it for reinforcing buttonholes or something like that, maybe, but I just didn't feel like it was needed for any piece here. The canvas is kind of that heavier feel to it. I used and I would recommend with any of our canvas projects is I use a top stitch needle which is a 9014. Most of everything else that I sew with for our rayon or our cotton or our linen is going to be an 8012. So this just needed to be a, just a little bit stronger. You don't need a 16 for any of the layers that might be incorporated in here. I didn't find that a 14 was challenged in any way. I used my straight edge ruler when I trace my patterns. I use, of course, my little lead pencils, fabric pencils. But the biggest thing that I have to tell you, the most important tool that I used for this garment was the point to point turner. And you probably have your favorite technique for turning points on collars, cuffs, Whatever it happens to be, every place that you have to turn your seam where there's a point, right side out, and really get a nice smooth point to it. I really love this tool and I use it for tracing to make a line on something and with a heavier canvas, it really does work and it really helps. So that's a tool that I think you should definitely have. When I laid out my pattern pieces on the fabric, I actually did it on this particular table and I use pattern weights, whatever your pattern weights are, simply because I didn't need to use pins. Nothing moves. This canvas, when it's on the table, unlike, you know, like working with a rayon, which is extremely drapey, it doesn't move on you at all. And so I just put pattern weights down. I used, and the ones that I use are these, they're a dritz. So you may have uh, washers or use a soup can, but anything that will give it more weight to keep your pattern piece in place. And then 
I used a rotary cutter for most of my cutting out of each one of the pattern pieces. Wherever there was a point or something that I needed to get a little bit closer, I used my scissors. But otherwise, I used my rotary cutter and it was super, super fast. We talked last week about using the cardboard layout at home, but uh, this time I did use this table here in the office. I used so fine thread and believe it or not, even though this is Lavender Lantern, the undertones in this jacket are almost that of a light blue. And so, you know, I should always look these color names up, but this is 435, so fine thread, and it is like a delicate baby dusty blue. And it just sunk in to the background color of this fabric. Okay, the only other thing that I used as a tool when I was sewing this jacket is fray check. I always put fray check down the center of my buttonholes before I open them up. And then I do it again after. I'm a little picky. So I really always want to make sure that I don't have any threads that are going to release. And it just really is a wonderful tool to always have on your sewing table. So those are the things that I used for, for constructing this jacket. The jacket itself, let's talk a little bit about the pattern pieces because I think it gives you kind of a layout of the shape of the garment, even though I'm wearing it, but the shape of the garment and what I incorporated into this, this garment. Okay, so again, I'm gonna show you the pattern pieces that I used for a medium. The back of the jacket is, of course, placed on the fold, center fold. Here is the yoke attachment up here our sleeve and then you're going to see maybe you can see this but I did it's a very straight jacket I graded it slightly out by an inch okay so I tried to grade it to the next size up right at the hip my arm is where I stayed as a medium to a large okay and then all the markings of course for your side pockets and all of that. Here's the front pattern piece, center front, pocket placements, your sleeve, and again, I graded it slightly, okay? Here's our inset seam pocket, front pocket. I did not do the lower pockets, those are bigger. We have a collar. You need to have, and this has a stand-up um, collar as well. So it's not just simply one collar. It is the stand plus the collar. And so this is our neckband and the collar, both on the fold. We have our back facing on the fold. And actually, I'm going to set this aside. We have our front, a front facing piece. Again, no interfacing. The back yoke. And I want to mention here too, on the back yoke, I did not, I went on the internet and I had posted some social media regarding this jacket and I had to ask a question, how should I finish the back yoke or should I do anything fun inside? And one of you had a great idea I didn't incorporate it, but I am going to on my next jacket, is to create a really fun um, double yoke so that it seals our seams inside the back of the jacket because it is kind of a rugged look. I just simply used my serger to finish off the seam between the back yoke and the back of the jacket. But to create kind of a fun coordinating cotton fabric inside, to just individualize your jacket and that would be fun too but but the pattern calls for only one back yoke but if you do incorporate something just have fun with it it would be really really fun and you can finish that by simply following that burrito method of rolling up your jacket inside and then flipping it through now the one thing with your canvas is it is rugged so you're going to have to really pull your canvas through that little burrito opening of your yoke in order to get that finish, but, but it's absolutely doable, okay? The sleeve, and we're gonna spend some time talking about the sleeve on this jacket. 
Here is the sleeve piece. And as you can see, it is extremely full. It is not just straight down, it is angled further out at the cuff than the shoulder point, okay? And here is the cuff for our sleeve with all of its markings. It's, it is about, actually, I never really measured this, but I'm gonna measure it now. It's about two in inches finished for your cuff, okay? Those are all the pattern pieces for this particular jacket. Now, let's talk about the size. And most specifically, the actual sleeve and the length of the sleeve. I did not measure the length of my sleeve before simply cutting out this pattern. Because most of the simplicity patterns that I've worked with in the past, and it's been a lot of them, I have never had to adjust, oh, except for once. I have really never had to adjust the length of the sleeve on any garments. This one, I should have measured. So keep that in mind. I would like, if I stand back here, I need to take two inches off the length of my sleeve. Take a moment, measure the pattern pieces, measure your sleeve and how you believe this is going to fit you. If you do a muslin, you'll know what I mean, but you will need to possibly adjust your sleeve. I would definitely on my next project, take two inches off the sleeve to give it a much, I don't know, I just felt like it was too low and two inches is really gonna help me out because I like my cuff to kind of land right, right slightly approaching the top of my hand, okay? So if you even have something bulky underneath it, it's not gonna rise up too much, it's just gonna fit you nicely. I'm gonna open up the cuff. From this pattern piece, okay, which is very wide, you're going to see how wide this cuff is. And I'm just gonna open up, there you go, you see that? So it has a lot, you know, it has a lot of style. And I think that's what really attracted me to the front of this pattern in the first place was the simplicity of the jacket, the style of the sleeve, and just the finish of it all. I just needed to pay a little bit more attention to the length of the sleeve and the fullness of the opening here. I would like to take you through for a minute what I'm going to do on my second jacket, which is going to be to attach the sleeve for view A, which is the streamlined sleeve to this jacket because I don't really want a longer jacket. I just want a, a sleeve a little less full. And that to me is going to be my go-to jacket pattern because it's it fits perfectly otherwise. Let's talk a little bit about this sleeve. I'd like to show you the differences in the fullness between the sleeve for view A and the sleeve that I used for view B and C. On the table is the sleeve for view A. We can best see the darker lines here for the extra, extra small, but it is a relatively straight sleeve. It narrows slightly at the cuff. And if I put the pattern piece for view B on top, matching up my medium size up here, you'll see the difference in the fullness at the cuff. It goes all the way out from a medium up here to the measurement on the cuff of an extra, extra large. So it is, a, it is really a full sleeve. So what I decided to do, instead of cutting out and creating another pattern piece for view A, I just simply drew those lines on this pattern piece. So I'll have the same sleeve for for any jacket that I decide to make. If I decide to make another one that has a fuller sleeve, I have that available or a narrower sleeve. 
and I really shouldn't say narrow, but more of a traditional straight sleeve. Those are the differences. Make sure that if you decide to do this, you're marking your notch because your notch will be in a separate position, but the, the opening, the slit opening is in the exact same position on the pattern piece. The one other thing that I wanted to draw your attention to, and I, at first I questioned whether or not I cut out view B correctly, but the arc on the shoulder of the sleeve does not match, and I hated saying this, but it does not match between sleeve A and sleeve B, even though we're using the same front and back and yoke pieces, regardless of the view of this pattern. I did not find any issue whatsoever with sewing the sleeve and attaching the sleeve to the garment the sleeve on this jacket is attached in the round and so it's not attached flat but it's attached in the round and there were no issues there's no gathering that's needed at all and i found that to be very helpful when working with a heavier canvas just make sure that you've got your dots marked and your notches marked properly and everything fit beautifully so then I questioned if the degree of difference between the pattern pieces, which looks to be almost a quarter of an inch right at the peak and top of the shoulder, it gradually gets a little bit steeper and then comes back down again. I don't know if that's going to make a difference in how the sleeve will fit or not, but just note that it is slightly different. So if you decide that you're going to first make view A, and then on a subsequent sewing, you decide you're going to make view B, just make sure you're, you feel comfortable with the adjustment of your sleeve. I just assumed that that would be identical and it is slightly off. I did not find any differences or any issues in any other pattern pieces, but that one caught my eye. I just wanted to make sure everything fit properly. So take note of that. So my next garment is going to have the straighter sleeve and less fullness at the cuff. I also want to show you, since this is on the table, I want to show you the difference in the fullness also. This piece is the cuff for view A, which is the straighter cuff, and this is for view B and C. So there is quite a dramatic difference between the two sleeves and the fullness, okay? So that just gives that indication, but otherwise every other pattern piece in this garment packet is for all three views. We've spent a lot of time talking about the sleeve styling on this particular jacket, but I think it's because it's such a prominent feature and style aspect to the look of this jacket. And I think what really attracted me to the garment. And so it's really gonna be fun to make another version of this with a narrower sleeve, shortening that sleeve about two inches and see what we come up with. I'm kind of considering reducing the size from a medium to a small, just because I really feel like, and, and I think it's just for me, just getting used to the, the weight of a heavier, stiffer canvas is also very different. Making it out of a five ounce canvas versus an 8.6 ounce canvas, again, we'll see what I decide to do there. But take into consideration what you like to wear. And if you're used to a denim jacket, I think this would be a very similar feel to a denim jacket, but yet just a slightly lighter is how I would describe that. If you're wondering about the canvas and how it feels and how it, how it fits. When you're also deciding on size, and this is something I give a lot of consideration to, is what fabric am I using in that garment's construction? Because they all drape differently because of the weight. Now that might seem obvious, but if I wasn't working with this heavier weight canvas, I might have made a smaller size because it's going to drape differently and hang differently. Like for example, if I were to make this out of a rayon, a medium would be far too big because everything would just truly hang. The stiffness of this fabric, the stiffness of the canvas gives it the look of what it's supposed to be, which is more of a denim jacket style 
garment. So that's also one thing that I look at when I'm looking at the back of a, of a pattern is what do they recommend for the fabric types? And that kind of helps me decide where I'm going to go within our Sovetik collection of fabric. What do I really want to construct my garment out of? This one was really interesting, I have to tell you. This is the first time I read so many different fabric variations on the back of a pattern jacket. So look at that next time when you're looking at a pattern, whether it be from Simplicity McCall's or one of your favorite independent designers. Let me list these. This is broadcloth, canvas, chambray, chino, corduroy, cotton types, denim, linen, linen types, satin. Now that would fit differently. That would hang differently, a satin stretch wovens, twill, and wool types. You know, those fabrics and all the differences amongst those are very different and are going to fit you differently and are gonna hang different. So take that into consideration as well when you're deciding on your fabric for your pattern. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, introduction to the Simplicity 9239 and this really, really fun canvas jacket. And next week, we're going to talk about a couple of really fun projects. And one of them will be this Batik rayon top slash jacket. It is the 9707 pattern from Simplicity. And again, this is made out of our Batik rayon. And I just have to finish putting the buttons and the buttonholes on it. We're also going to tackle the Sidekick Organizer bag, which is this cute bag that will fit on a walker, it'll fit on your beach chair, it will basically fit on, hopefully the Velcro is not too loud here, it'll basically fit on anything that has a bar or a handle and keep you organized. So we'll talk about this next week as well and I am really excited to get going on that. So if you have any questions or comments or thoughts about any of the projects that we talked about today, the Simplicity Jacket, working with Canvas, or any other of our Sovetique fabrics, let us know in the comments below. We hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of the future Fabric Fridays and educational videos. And follow us on our social media, Facebook and Instagram. We really do appreciate it so very much. And hopefully you're getting our newsletters so you get all of our information, introductions, new products, and promotions as well. So have a great, great, great Friday and a great start to your weekend. And keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.